we're going to go through an article today on Try Hack Me and how it can help with different careers in cyber. Because there are lots of different careers in cyber. Pen testing is just one of them. And even within pen, pen testing, there are some very specific uh, skills. Try Hack Me, careers in cyber. Task one introduction. Cybersecurity careers are becoming more in demand and offer high salaries. There are many different jobs within the security industry, from offensive pen testing, hacking machines and reporting on vulnerabilities, to defensive security, defending against and investigating cyber attacks. The more that a person says I am this thing, like I am a pen tester or I am a SOC engineer, the more that they draw a box around their capabilities. While pen testing is one career field, uh, I would categorize that more into hacking. Hacking and recovery. So as a hacker, you can be a red team hacker, you can be a blue team hacker, like a threat hunter. Now conversely with recovery, you could be a SOC analyst or you could be a risk analyst. You are helping to recover from something that is, could happen or did happen. Cyber attacks. Why get a career in cyber? High pay, jobs in security of high starting salary. Exciting. Work can include legally hacking systems or defending against cyber attacks. Be in demand. There are over 3.5 million unfilled cyber positions. I guess they pay well, I don't know, I like what I do. Exciting, it, it can be exciting, it can also be very tedious. There are two main avenues for somebody that is in the cyber profession. That is, I am building something or I am scaling something. Those two mindsets don't always go together well. Somebody that's a good builder may not be a good scaler. So if you are a builder and you're joining a team that is scaling, that may lead you to some burnout. You know, if you're a scaler and you, you're building, you're joining a startup and they're like, hey, build all this. It may be very frustrating. Um, yeah, there, while there may be like 3.5 million unfilled cyber positions, that doesn't mean that all of them need filled. It doesn't mean that all of them are worth your time. And it doesn't mean that they are truly entry level positions. Security analysts are integral to constructing security measures across organizations to protect the company from attack. Analysts explore and evaluate company networks to uncover actionable data and recommendations for engineers to develop preventative measures. Depending on where a person goes, the titles may mean more than other places. A security analyst is not, they're not going to be constructing security measures. They're going to be operating within the framework of already constructed measures. So as an analyst, your job is to operate within the framework. Now, as you, as a person moves on in their career, they can start to maybe make those frameworks on their own. Measures. This job role requires working with various stakeholders to gain an understanding of security requirements and the security landscape. Resp that's true, but not a, at an analyst. That's more of an engineer, senior engineer. If you're trying to break into cyber and you apply for an analyst role, um, just keep that in mind. Your expectations may be, I'm gonna come in and help design a policy. That's not the expectations of an analyst. Abilities. Working with various stakeholders to analyze the cybersecurity throughout the company. Compile ongoing reports about the safety of networks, documenting security issues and measures taken in response. Develop security plans, incorporating research on new attack tools and trends, and measures needed across teams to maintain data security. This first two, yes, working with various stakeholders and compiling reports and data. The last one, develop security plans, uh, not so much. Um, maybe as an engineer or a team lead, but not as an analyst. Yes. Task three, security engineer. Security engineers develop and implement security solutions using threats and vulnerability data, often sourced from members of the security workforce. Security engineers work across circumventing a breadth of attacks. Yeah, so the engineers, just like the namesake, they are engineering a solution. So that's what they do. It's a next, le next step up from security analyst, and now they are creating and finding new things on their own. Including web application attacks, network threats, and evolving trends and tactics. The ultimate goal is to retain and adopt security measures to mitigate the risk of attack and data loss. Responsibilities. Testing and screening security measures across software. Monitor networks and reports to update systems and mitigate vulnerabilities. Identify and implement systems needed for optimal security. Learning paths. Try HackMe's learning paths will give you both the fundamental technical knowledge and hands-on experience, which is crucial to becoming a successful security engineer. Cyber defense. Junior penetration tester. Offensive pen testing. Task 4 incident responder. Incident responders respond productively. So I'm not really familiar with the try hack me stuff. Free security and cyber defense. It seems like those are the learning paths. I'll have to check those out. I was hoping they would kind of delve a little bit into more what they are. Task for incident responder. Incident responders respond productively and efficiently to security breaches. Responsibilities include creating plans, policies, and protocols for organizations to enact during and following incident. This is often a highly pressurized position with assessments and responses required in real time as attacks are unfolding. Yes, this is very accurate. Um, being a SOC engineer or a security engineer is not the same as being an incident responder. If a person decides that they wanted to go into the IR field, 
they have to understand that their nights and weekends may get taken away from them. They will essentially have to be on call almost all the time. And then when something does happen, people are gonna expect answers from you quickly. So having some leadership, some soft skills, some good time management, understanding how to deal with stakeholders and senior leaders under pressure, that's gonna be critical. No one wanna ask for help. Because if you are the only incident responder on a case and you need help, it's better that you go get that help and get the incident contained than try to look good and have people yell at you all the time. Um, I personally, I say this all the time, I don't think that I would do well as an incident responder or blue teamer. Um, I do like threat hunting, I do like hacking, stock engineer, um, IR, I don't think I'm mentally I'm equipped for that. Incident response metrics include MTTD, MTTA, and MTTR, the mean time to detect, acknowledge, and recover, from attacks, the aim is to achieve a swift and effective response, retain financial standing and avoid negative breach implications. Ultimately, incident responders protect the company's data, reputation, and financial standing from cyber attacks. Yeah, that's good. The, all the mean time to detect, acknowledge, and recover is good. Those are metrics that you should expect to capture as an IR person. I like that the author um, mentioned the business goals. Every cyber company, or every cyber element truly has, should have goals that align with the business. Because if there's no business and it's not making money, you don't have a job as a cyber engineer. So retain financial standing, swift effective response, and an avoid negative breach implications, which can include giving um, falsified data or in factual data. Task 5 Digital Forensics Examiner If you like to play detective, this might be the perfect job. If you are working as part of a law enforcement department, you would be focused on collecting and analyzing evidence to help solve crimes, charging the guilty and exonerating the innocent. On the other hand, if your work falls under defending a company's network, you will be using your forensic skills to analyze incidents, such as policy violation. Digital forensics and policy viol violations. Policy violations, I think, are going to fall more in the risk, uh, if there's a risk team at the company. Digital forensics is exactly what it's going to be. Um, Somebody was dumb and put malware on the computer. The IR people responded to the incident, they contained it. Now they're gonna send an image of that machine over to the, the digital forensics person, and they're gonna say, tell me how it got on here, tell me what it accessed, tell me did it go anywhere else. Yes. Task six, malware analyst. A malware analyst's work involves analyzing suspicious programs, discovering what they do and writing reports about their findings. A malware analyst is sometimes called a reverse engineer as their core task revolves around converting compiled programs from machine language to readable code, usually in a low-level language. This work requires the malware analyst to have a strong programming background. Malware analyst is a very specialty item. If you're trying to, to break into cyber, being a malware analyst is not the way... Like you can break in as a malware analyst, but you're going to have to break into a very mature team. A team that needs somebody to reverse engineer malware. If you're gonna, if this is the path that a person wants to go, uh, you may want to try to break into like an EDR company, not necessarily a company, like a bank. Uh, go try to break into a cybersecurity field or a cybersecurity position in like a security company. This work requires the malware analyst to have a strong programming background, especially in low-level languages such as assembly language and C language. The ultimate goal is to learn about all the activities that a malicious program carries out, find out how to detect it and report it. Responsibilities. Carry out static analysis. Last sentence there, find out how to detect and report it. Detecting it's one thing. Detecting it at scale is another. So, YAR signatures, rules, things like that. It's, you either need to have that partnership built with somebody else on the team, like a security engineer, uh, mentioned way up, up at the top or um, outsource it. So if you find the IOCs, you can send that to the EDR that your company uses and say, hey, I found this, please incorporate it into our EDR product. So it can be detected. Task seven, penetration tester. Here we go. Who may see penetration testing referred to as pen testing and ethical hacking. A penetration tester's job role is to test the security of the systems and software within a company. This is achieved through attempts to uncover flaws and vulnerabilities through systemized hacking. Test the security of systems and software within the company. I would add processes as well. Um, this is achieved through attempts to uncover flaws and vulnerabilities through systemized hacking, hacking, both in the technology and the processes. Penetration testers exploit these vulnerabilities to evaluate the risk in each instant. The company can then take these insights to rectify issues to prevent a real-world cyber attack. So a pen tester may evaluate the risk, but it is not their responsibility to measure the risk. Don't become that pen tester that find that gets so bogged down with like finding a risk technically and then rating it 
measuring it, not on keyboard anymore. Now you're stuck writing paper, right? So like either your specialty is finding these things or your specialty is in the risk category. And how do I measure and affect, how do I contextualize the vulnerabilities that were found? If you go to a small company and they ask you to do both of those jobs, make sure the stakeholders understand that the throughput of finding actual bugs and flaws in their software will be smaller. Always present a solution instead of just problems. So then recommend that they have a risk person work with you so that you as the pen tester can use your technical skills to find the stuff, pass it off to a risk person so that they can measure it and track it. CyberTech. Responsibilities. Conduct tests on computer systems, networks, and web-based applications. Perform security assessments, audits, and analyze policies. Evaluate and report on insights, recommending actions for attack prevention. You can analyze policies as long as it's part of a tabletop, and that is the better use of your time to analyze a policy um, just to understand it and say, oh, this is not great. Uh, th this carries with it a specific risk score. That is not the best use of a pen tester's time. Testing. Task 8 Red Teamer. Red teamers share similarities to penetration testers, with a more targeted job role. Penetration testers look to uncover many vulnerabilities across systems to keep cyber defense in good standing, whilst red teamers are enacted to test the company's detection and response capabilities. The, the nature of a red team is not to test the company's detection and response capabilities. The nature of the red team is to verify that a company's defensive posture works the way that they think that it works. Now, that can be done in a covert manner, which is what Red Team does, or it can be done in a penetration testing manner, which is open box, everybody knows it's coming. The way that this sentence is written, a person may, th may say, hey, as a Red Teamer, my main responsibilities are to go up against the Blue Team. It isn't. The Red Team's main responsibilities are to find weaknesses and exploit them and take that as far as they can. Red Teamers are there to tell a story. They take that story and they hand it off to another team that is responsible for fixing the systemic issues that the red team found. That team will address the company's detection and response capabilities. I talk about this extensively um, in my DEF CON talk that I gave this year. It is not the nature of a red team to go into direct confrontation with the blue team. That's not what the red team is for. Protection. Red team assessments can run for up to a month, typically by a team external to the company. They are often best suited to organizations with mature security programs in place. Yes, um, a security program has to be mature for a red team to make sense. Because you don't just take one red teamer. If you only bring in one red team operator, you are dooming that person to potential burnout and failure. So a team needs to be able to accept at least two red team operators to have the best chance of running a successful red team program. So, mature team, yes. Red team is not there to test the blue team. The red team is there to find weaknesses and soft targets in a unique manner. In place, responsibilities. Emulate the role of a threat actor to uncover exploitable vulnerabilities. Maintain access and avoid detection. Assess organization security controls, threat intelligence, and incident response procedures. Evaluate and report on insights with actionable data for companies to avoid real world instances. I'm gonna go back here for a little bit. So, responsibilities emulate the role of a threat actor to uncover exploit vulnerabilities. The red team can do that if the if the blue team is mature enough to need to be tested against a specific adversary. Most of the time they're not, and that's okay. Um, but threat emulation is okay, and it is useful if the blue team is mature enough for it to make sense. There's no point in the red team learning how to emulate an adversary if there's no detection measures in place to validate the response to a specific threat. Again, the red team is there just to find bad stuff any way that it can, and then take those findings and help them get fixed. Assess the organization's security controls. Yes, threat intelligence, maybe, if the, if the team is mature enough for it, and incident response procedures, no. Um, the red team is there not to test the incident response procedures. Red team is there to find bad stuff. The reason I keep, I keep bringing this up is because a red team can easily get bogged down doing the wrong thing. And when it gets bogged down doing not what it's there, not what it was meant to do, its effectiveness becomes less and less, and eventually it can't show its value anymore. Evaluate and report on insights with actionable data for companies to avoid real world instances. Yes, as the red team, 
they will typically be looking for new exploits, new vulnerabilities, all that stuff with a good relationship that is founded um, with the blue team or threat intelligence team or whatever, the risk team, uh, they can feed those things. If, if the things that are found are nowhere useful to the red team because the operation is ongoing that doesn't use them or there are no planned operations ongoing, they can take that information and pass it to the risk team or the blue team and say, hey, we're not using this right now, but it's best go patch this, make sure it gets patched. Learning paths. Try Hackme's learning paths will give you both the fundamental technical knowledge and hands-on experience, which is crucial to becoming a successful red teamer. Junior penetration tester. Offensive pen testing. Red team learning path. Coming soon. That red is team all. learning path. Uh, it's basically a trade skill. You gotta find a mentor. An easier way to get into true red teaming would be to join the government or military. That's one of the few places where there's an actual trade skill path for that. Really though, just understand that if you decide to go the red team route and you say, I'm going to break into cyber as a red teamer, the places you're going to break into the companies are mature security programs. Don't try to go be a red teamer in a startup or a small company. It ain't gonna work out. You could be a consultant. You can go try to get a job as a consultancy. If you do bug bounties, that's not red teaming. That is penetration testing. To want to get into that red team path, but the more that you specialize, just understand that the smaller the job pool is going to be for somebody to try to break in, right? So like we do need red teamers, but there is a time and place for them. Don't waste your time interviewing in a place that wants a pen tester when what your skills could be are a red teamer. Uh, so thank you to the author for writing that article. It was cool. I'm gonna go back and check out some of those try hack me paths. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll do a video on that because I wanna see what those look like. Right, thanks.